Hello and welcome to the viewers of this video. This is the Orange Fan here, bringing you another entry for the episode Recap and Thoughts category. This video will be dedicated to the Funimation dub of episode 53 of Dragon Ball Super. We begin this episode with Goku, Beerus, and Whis all traveling to Universe 10 because someone from Universe 10 has an energy signature that's similar to Goku Black's energy signature. We soon find out that the individual's name is Zamasu. And according to Whis, Zamasu is a lower Kai. That's the same position on the god hierarchy that King Kai has. But he's training to become a Supreme Kai due to his status as a fighting prodigy which makes him exceptionally powerful by the standards of the Kais. We then head to the planet of the Kais in Universe 10, where we see that Zamasu is indeed the Kai that we saw at the end of the previous episode, and he's serving tea to Universe 10's Supreme Kai, Goasu, voiced by Garrett Shank. Goasu really enjoys the tea that Zamasu has made. He comments that tea made by a pure-hearted individual is the most delicious of tea. Go yeah, Goasu also adds that Zamasu's pure heart, training of the body, training of the mind, and observing mortals to achieve a better understanding of mortals will all lead to success with regards to Zamasu becoming Goasu's successor as Universe 10's Supreme Kai. Zamasu admits that he has doubts about if mortals are worth the protection of the gods or worthy of the protection of the gods, mentioning that he's seen, he's seen many mortal affairs where he believes that Mortals have made the same mistakes in a continuous cycle. He even goes as far as to say that that the most merciful thing to do is to put a stop to what he sees as a futile cycle. Goasu responds that the Kais, the gods of creation, are not allowed to interfere with mortal affairs if they can avoid it and that the job of the gods of creation are to observe and nurture mortals. He also adds that the destroyers, the gods of destruction, are the only gods that are actually allowed to interfere or interact with mortal affairs. Soon enough, Goku, Beerus, and Whis all arrive. Beerus and Whis are familiar with Goasu, as all three of them... Or yeah, Goasu greets Beerus and Whis with familiarity, and he introduces them to Zamasu. In turn, Beerus and Whis introduce Goasu and Zamasu to Goku, and they talk about uh, the situation with regards to Goku Black. While this discussion is going on, Beerus and Whis notice that Zamasu doesn't recognize Goku, and he's not familiar with the time rings when they're brought up. Having said that, though, Zamasu is quite offended by Goku touching him, Goku acting so casual when speaking to gods, and he's also baffled that Goku wants to have a sparring match with him. Goasu makes a point to remind Zamasu to... to be courteous around around their guests, and he apologizes for Zamasu's outbursts. He also acknowledges Goku's efforts to act polite, even if it comes off as rather awkward, to say the least. And he's especially surprised, though, when Beerus and Whis mention that an individual who bears a strong resemblance to Goku that is to say someone who doesn't seem to be a Supreme Kai, was seen using a time ring. And Goasu is more than happy to oblige Beerus and Whis's request to see his time rings. So they all go to the nearby temple, 
and Goasu pulls out the box that contains the time rings. There are five of them in total. One of them is silver. That's the same color as the time ring that Goku Black was wearing. And the other four time rings are colored green. So Goasu says that all of his time rings are accounted for. And he also questions why they would be checking Universe 10. Or yeah, why would they go to Universe 10 for a crisis that's occurring in Universe 7? Beerus and Whis's response is that they're checking all of the universes, rather than them mentioning the fact that Zamasu and Goku Black have similar energy signatures. While Beerus and Whis are talking to Goasu, Goku keeps uh, pleading to Zamasu for a sparring match, and eventually Goasu actually tells Zamasu to go ahead and have a sparring match with Goku, his hope is that Zamasu will have a better understanding of mortals thanks to this sparring match. And Zamasu and Goasu are both surprised when Beerus tells them that Zamasu should not hold back when fighting Goku or else he'll die. So Zamasu should give it his best effort. Or yeah, Zamasu should give his best effort for this sparring match. Back in Universe 7 on Earth, we do get to see Future Trunks and Krillin talking to each other for a while, but then Android 18 and Marin arrive because they were worried when Krillin didn't return home, and Krillin is quick to clarify to them that a, an unexpected incident had occurred. Future Trunks is naturally surprised to see Android 18, but Krillin quickly clarifies to him that he... Krillin and Android 18 are married, and they had a daughter together, Marin. And Future Trunks sees how the Android 18 of this timeline is different from the Android 18 of his timeline. And Android 18 decides to have a little fun with Future Trunks by pretending that she wants to avenge her alternate timeline counterpart's uh, defeat. But yeah, she's just playing around. She's just kidding, and... Future Trunks is, he finds this a little awkward, so he excuses himself uh, to see how the progress on the time machine repairs are going. And we do see that Bulma, Dr. Briefs, and the Pilaf gang have been making a lot of progress with the time machine repairs. And they all feel that they've earned themselves a little break now. Back in Universe 10, Goku and Zamasu prepare their sparring match. Goku powers up to Super Saiyan 2, and Zamasu and Goasu are both surprised by how powerful Goku is. They're, they become even more surprised when they find out that Goku had fought Beerus a little while ago. And so, during the sparring match, Goku, Beerus, and Whis get a, they get a better feel for Zamasu's energy signature, and they all agree that Zamasu's energy signature is not exactly the same as Goku Black's energy signature, but it's very close in similarity. And while Zamasu proves to be very powerful by Kai standards, he's still no match for Goku in his Super Saiyan 2 form, and Goku still easily defeats Zamasu. But Goku praises Zamasu for his strength, and he offers to help... Yeah, he offers a hand to help Zamasu up. Zamasu is preparing to attack Goku, but Goasu makes a point to uh, remind Zamasu to... Or he insists that Zamasu be a good sport and accept Goku's offer, which he does, even if a bit begrudging on his part. Feeling that they have a sufficient amount of information, Beerus and Whis uh, bid Zamasu and Goasu farewell, and Goku says goodbye as well, also adding that he wants to have a rematch with uh, Zamasu at some point in the future. While Goku, Beerus, and Whis are all heading back to Universe 7, Beerus and Whis talk about how... Yeah, they... Br yeah, Beerus and Whis say that there is a strong possibility that Zamasu may somehow become Goku Black 
uh, later on due to the whole situation with time travel. And they do acknowledge that there are still some mysteries that haven't been solved regarding this greater mystery of Goku Black's existence. Goku mentions that Zamasu has the potential to become even more powerful than he already is. He even goes as far as to say that Zamasu could have the potential to surpass Beerus' power sometime in the future. Back in Universe 10, Zamasu actually thanks Goasu for uh, encouraging him to have a sparring match with Goku, saying that he feels he has a better perspective on mortals thanks to said sparring match. Goasu takes this as meaning that Zamasu... Yeah, he takes it as the doubts Zamasu had about mortals has been lifted, and he also requests Zamasu to make some more tea for him, which Zamasu obliges. But while Zamasu is making the tea, we get to hear his thoughts. And his thoughts are along the lines of, Mortals are more dangerous than I originally thought. And Goku, I will never f forget you. And that's how we end the episode. Now, this is an important episode, and the thing I liked about this episode is, similar to how the Champa Saga introduced us to characters from a different universe than Universe 7, the main one, in the case of the Champa Saga, it was Universe 6, uh, this episode introduced us to characters from Universe 10, and they were actually gods, in fact, and Kai's, in fact. <laughs> And that was something I liked about this episode. We got to learn a little bit more about the gods of creation, the Kais, Lower Kais and Supreme Kais alike. And Goasu clarified that the Kais are not allowed to interfere with mortal affairs if they can avoid it. And that helps to put a little more perspective on some previous, um, previous occurrences in the franchise. Like, it explains why Shin never did anything about uh, Frieza, because he's not allowed to. And as for the situation with Boo, yeah, I would say Boo, the Boo crisis was probably the, um, the exception, was the exception or one of those instances where they couldn't avoid it. And I imagine that the fact that Boo attacked the Supreme Kais of Universe 7 first, that probably also affected the decision to go after Boo. And we also do hear that the destroyers, the gods of the, yeah, the gods of destruction, are the gods that actually are allowed to interfere with mortal affairs, and yeah, so it helps to give us a better perspective on the differences between the gods of creation and the gods of destruction. Now, the other big thing about this episode was who voiced Zamasu in the Funimation dub. You may have noticed I didn't mention that in the recap, and there's a reason for that. It's a big topic. Now, the credits list Zamasu's voice artist as David Gray, and David Gray's voice sounds like the voice of Sam Magister's. The voice artist credited as Zamasu's English voice in the video game Fighters, and they both sound like they bo their voices sound the same as the voice of Zamasu in the English version of Xenoverse 2, who went uncredited. And the reason I bring this up is because it's strongly implied that David Gray and Sam Magisters are actually pseudonyms, and they're pseudonyms for one particular, uh, one particular actor. And it's strongly implied, it's strongly hinted that the actor who plays Zamasu in the Funimation dub is James Marsters. Most people may recognize him as Spike from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but he's actually been in the Dragon Ball franchise before. More specifically, he, pr he played uh, Piccolo in the live-action movie Dragon Ball Evolution, and yeah, Dragon Ball Evolution has a notorious reputation among uh, fans of the franchise. And it's actually a similar situation to what happened with The Legend of Korra, 
one of the one of the main characters on the Legend of Korra, Asami Sato, was voiced by Sichel Gabriel, who was an who portrayed a character in the the live action movie for Avatar: The Last Airbender. She played the Northern Water Tribe princess, to be more specific. So that's uh yeah that and yeah listening to his voice throughout the episode i'm confident that yes james marsters is the one voicing zamasu in the funimation dub under a pseudonym and quite honestly i do like his voice for zamasu i think he gets the important characteristics of the character down pat now some people wonder some people thought he may have sounded a bit older than they expected because while kais are older than humans they feel that by kai standards zamasu would be on the younger side but i didn't mind because i've known teenagers who sounded older than they actually were and that was the case for me even when i was a teenager a lot of people thought i sounded older than i actually was so Zamasu sounding a bit older by Kai standards, that doesn't bother me. I feel the important characteristics of Zamasu were still portrayed in the voice, and that's good enough for me. So I'm not I'm not too worried about if he sounds older or younger. And as for the performance, I did enjoy it. I know some people were worried because of the video game performances, but this is an important lesson. I've mentioned it before, but I think video game performances aren't the best frame of reference to judge a performance. I always feel we should be patient and wait for the dub of the anime before gauging a performance. And yes, I think this was an example. I believe James Marsters, David Gray, Sam Magisters, I believe he does a good job as Zamasu, and I'm looking forward to hearing more of him in the role. So besides that... Um, like I said, there was a funny scene with Android 18, like having a little fun with future trunks, and I thought that was pretty funny, and it kind of highlights the differences between the two timelines. And, oh, I guess I should mention this. Um, Zamasu, there's been two pronunciations throughout the fandom regarding Zamasu's name. Like, the dub went with Zamasu, but some people pronounce it as Zamas, so... For those curious about it, from what I was able to gather, this is a situation where some Japanese dialects sometimes leave out the um, leave out the vowel that's at the end of a word. Sometimes, like like it's been clarified, really, Zamasu and Zamas are both technically valid pronunciations. Like it reminds me of the Japanese word for female ninja which I've heard pronounced as kunoichi and kunoichi. From what I understand, both pronunciations are valid. So I think it's a dialect situation. And I bring that up because, once again, this is an example of why I'm not really a stickler over pronunciations. If you want to pronounce it as zamas, that's cool. I'm not going to antagonize you. Please just don't antagonize anyone for saying zamasu or don't antagonize the dub for saying zamasu. They're both valid pronunciations. And, yep, there we go. We've now discussed the Funimation dub for episode 53 of Dragon Ball Super on this channel. Take care, and until next time.